Hello everyone and welcome back for some more of Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. And since the last video, there's been a bit of yak shaving going on and a bit of sort of just going around and, and fixing things up because there's been various little little things that have been annoying or have been slight problems that I've been going around and I've been wanting to improve. So there haven't been any sort of huge drastic improvements, but there's been lots of little little tweaks here and there. So one of them, as you can see here, I, if you remember in the previous episode, I was saying that, yes, I've got material science, uh, tumpty tumpty tumpty, four running here. But I started building all of the um, the, the heat shield tiles here on, on, on site. And there's a couple of disadvantages to this. One is that it's an, a load of extra machines here that are, are sitting there taking up space and so on. Not that, not that space is particularly short in space. There is a lot of space in space. But there's a number of downsides to it. So one of the most obvious one is that you can't put productivity modules in your machines in space. So they just run at 100% productivity. Whereas if you if you do it if you do the construction down on a planet, you can put in productivity modules and bump it up to maybe 1.3, 130%. And that makes producing these things a bit cheaper. And so that's something I I definitely um want 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 to do uh, where I can. Another reason to do it like that is because if, if you see, to, to, to make these I need to bring up um, sulphur, I need to bring up iridium, I need to have stone that goes through various processes to make these stone tablets in order to make the heat shields. And so if we have a look at this, in order to make one heat shielding, we need four stone, we need one stone brick, a, a fraction of a um, iridium block and a sulphur. And so that adds up to being essentially more takes up more space in my rockets or my spaceships than it would to just bring the, uh, the, the, um, the heat shield tiles up on their own. So there's a couple of reasons here. One is because I want to, I want to be able to use the efficiency modules to get, sorry, the productivity modules to make it more efficient, um, resource efficient specifically, not energy efficient. And I want to start using, and I want to have it as far down the chip chain as possible so that as many of the inputs have already been used and gone into it before it actually before it's actually made in before anything is brought up into space so what i've got here is i've got a second belt bringing the um bringing it all in from over here and so in order to get it to here there is a various there's a various chain of there's a long chain of steps that i needed to go through and so i'll go through those kind of backwards because this is basically the order that my thoughts went in um even if it's not the order i necessarily did the building in so in order to get stuff over to here I put in this extra belt and I've prioritised that one, so this one should now be idle all of the time, shouldn't run. Um, and that goes up all the way up here to a new LTN station. So this LTN station is bringing in heat shield tiles. But, you say, there, aren't any, there wasn't anywhere on your space station to bring the heat shield tiles in from. Where are they coming from? Well, that's, that's, um, that's the next step. So in order to get the heat shield tiles to here, you have to have them being made somewhere. And so, or you have to have them being put on the LTN system somewhere. And so that brings us over to here where there's an LTN station here that's being filled up with these heat shield tiles. So that's great. We've got, I don't know how many in here, it won't tell me because of the, um, <laughs> because it's on the wrong, because of the multiple networks thing I've got going on here. But there are, there are quite a few in here. We've got, okay, we've got about, we've got about a thousand in here. That isn't quite as many as I was hoping. But still, it's, it's a start and it's, and it's getting gradually topped up over time. Because, as you can see, there is a belt feeding in here. And that belt goes all the way up to where my spaceship lands here in order to unload. So now the spaceship will be bringing up large quantities of heat shield tiles, dumping them onto this belt, and they can be loaded into, into all of the appropriate places. Great. How many am I actually bringing up? Let's have a quick look. Um, this is my shopping list here. Oh, so we're bringing, we've got, we're ordering 8,000. So it should, the spaceship should keep bringing them up until there's 8,000 in my, in, in the base. And one of the interesting things I've done here, you might notice the, the addition of some green wires, which I don't normally use very much. But what we've got here, we've got the red cables, um, tying everything, absolute, absolutely everything together. So it's, that contain, the, the red network contains everything I have in space. Whereas these, just con the green ones, are just connected to all of these chests and then to this station. So a train won't come here if it's if it's trying to get something else. It'll only come here for the things that it should know about. And that's working quite nicely. It's keeping the two, the two networks separate. However, that brings us back another step. So we know, now we need, that means we need to be putting these, um, these heat shield tiles onto a spaceship to bring them up here to put into this system. So for that, we'll have a look down on Norvis because that is where the spaceship is coming from. Um, where am I in my base? Oh, I'm over there. Okay. So the spaceship... Nope, I'm lost. What's this? Oh, this is here. Right, let's let's go there. Right, so the spaceship is here. It's being loaded up with all kinds of stuff. So as you can see, we've got scaffolding being flowing in at the moment. We've got the um, 
data card substrates flowing in. Those seem to be the main things that are going in. Because there's seven and a half thousand um, heat shield tiles in there already, that's already been filled up with all the t heat shield tiles we need. And if we look in here, we can see the spaceship is about, it's about probably about two thirds full, and most of that is these heat shield tiles. So it's just sitting here, it's going to sit here until it's actually full, and then it will take off, it'll fly up into orbit and unload at the other end. Great, that's working fine. So it's got to the point where it is now happy. We have a steady supply of heat shield tiles being brought in here, as you can see. And I've upgraded all these belts to blue because the stuff wasn't coming in as quickly as I wanted it to. And if we follow this all the way back, then we end up down here somewhere. Um, and here is, the, here is my system that's making, that's making the heat shield tiles. So I've done some modifications here. One of the things I noticed, I think in probably in a previous one of these episodes, was that I didn't have enough machine, it didn't have enough pro uh, productivity modules in these machines. So these only had two in each one because I'd, I'd upgraded them from being the blue type of assembly machines, the Mark IIs, to the yellow ones, the, uh, the assembly machine Mark III. And those can take four modules in them. And so that allows me to go from a plus 16% productivity to plus 32% productivity. Great. That's an extra, extra heat shield tiles for basically for free. So that's exactly what I wanted from there. However, the other thing was, the, uh, the problem I was having with building these was, was, was partly that, and partly because it was rather slow, so I shoved in these beacons as well. And conveniently, these beacons are sufficiently wide area that I, did, I was worried that I was going to need to go in and completely redesign this system. But actually, these massive beacons have, enough of an, uh, have a big enough area of coverage that they can cover the entire width of that system without needing to be shoved somewhere in the middle of it. So we've got... A huge, a huge amount of beaconage, a huge amount of uh, module or uh, moduling of these um, of these assembly machines without, and I'm able to just stick it here. And I granted, it's it's affecting all of these other machines around it as well. So this one is running at um, 100, plus 160% crafting speed, um, and, but it's also running at minus 30% power consumption. So actually having it there and affecting those is is good, is better, is better than it would otherwise be. So that's great. Actually, in hindsight, I should probably put um, productivity modules in these machines as well. And maybe this beacon should have been in, the, in, in this gap between the two to, to, to get these ones as well. Because those are are not doing the extra productivity. So they're, uh, they're getting through the extra iridium that you would that you get through without the, without the boost in efficiency. So that's probably something I should do. Um, however, at the moment, I note that the um, irid iridium turning it into the plates is a bit... Let's just say it's the limiting factor of how many of these um, heat shield tiles I'm able to make. So it's only getting around to about about here before before it runs out. So there's about is that a quarter of the machines. No, it's a bit a bit less than a quarter of the machines along here aren't running. Now at the moment that's not a problem because I am producing these uh, tiles faster than I need them. So this belt is presumably filling up. He says scrolling all the way up it, looking for where it's filled filled up to. Um, yes, I think it is. But it's yeah the the point where it's filled up to is somewhere in these in these underground belts. As you can see, it's got to here, but it hasn't got to here yet. So eventually, as we chuck some more of these heat shield tiles in, there we go. It's filled up to there now, mostly. Yes, it has. Um, so gradually, this is is catching up. We are making them faster than we're using them. So that it's it's basically okay. Actually, thinking about that slightly harder, these machines along the top have all stopped. So actually, if we didn't have the um, we wouldn't have any of these machines along the bottom running, I suspect, if this was running flat out across the top. So this is definitely not fast enough. I will need to come and improve this, probably with blue belts and putting in more more speed modules down here as well, so, and, and, and the productivity modules as well. So that's something that actually still needs to be done. I should try and remember that. However, the next problem, <laughs> yes, this, I told you this was an entire parade of yaks is that we didn't have enough iridium coming in. There was, there was no iridium here, and that was the main reason this had stalled completely and I'd run out of um, run out of heat shield tiles. So I, the, the next thing to do was then to come over here, have a look at this this spaceship and work out what was going wrong here. And now there were several things that were wrong with this with this ship, that were wrong with this system. So for one thing, I hadn't set up the, um, the numbers on these um, clamps properly. I'd been sort of botching it and controlling the ship a little bit manually and, and, and telling it to go from place to place. So I've gone in and I've set up, so now we've now got to the point where clamp 11 is the clamp number for a ship that brings Iridium from Kothar to Norvis. It's for that very specific one route is doing that. Um, so that means I was able to then come in here and program this one, this combinator, to say that you always, you're always supposed to land at a, at a clamp number 11. So the other, the main reason actually, the slightly stronger reason why this wasn't working, 
If we now go off and have a look at Kothar, which is down here, uh, not this particular part of it, but over here, yes, so we, we didn't have the second clamp because there weren't any clamps on Kothar and there wasn't an underground space belt either. So I was able to build up all this belt stuff, but I wasn't actually able to finish quite finish it off and make it into a place where a spaceship could land and fill up. So I in ended up flying out there in my personal ship in order to build that up by hand because it seemed like the easiest way to do it. I probably could have put the parts onto a um, onto a Kothar bound spaceship that does that does the um, the general transport work, but it seemed easier just to go out there myself and do that. And so, that means there are two slots here for spaceships to come in and land in, and they've got different clamp numbers. So number four is the one that goes to um, to the to Norvis orbit. Number eleven is the one that goes to uh, that goes to Nor Norvis itself. So we, we we need Kothar in both of those places. Now, in hindsight, I could have had this work with um, a single a single system, a single loading place, by having these two clamps at sort of slightly different heights along here. And in hindsight, that would have been better for quite a few reasons, because it would have meant I'd have been able to have two ships land here and load up uh, in, in the same, on the same loading point. And also in um, in Norvis orbit, I would have been able to have this, I'd have been able to have fewer fueling points. Um, so up here. Um, yes, we'd have, we'd have been able to have multiple ships landing in the same sort of place here and just by just having a long row of these clamps with different numbers on so they could all so could land at any, any of them. Instead I had to build up a yet another refueling point all the way up here using this uh, up here with this clamp and these this pumps here. So there is, on the plus side this means there is room for more than more and more and more ships to land and, and refuel. On the flip on the uh, minor side it's got bigger and bigger and bigger and there's, there's there's quite a lot of fuel held in all of these tanks up here which is I mean it doesn't really matter it's just it's just more and more buffering in there. Um, so they're things I've sort of I've, I've worked up to that point and I've, I've put in extra extra landing points for that so that, that works nicely. So that was that was pretty much that was almost the final stage. I came in here, I put in the clamp, the spaceship came in, and then this belt went dry and it was empty. And I went, oh no, what's going on here? So that <laughs> it then turns out the reason that had failed was because the uh, the glass was backed up along here, um, and the stone was backed up along here where it's pulverized. So the stone comes in here from co from iridium processing, gets crushed into sand, that gets made into glass, goes into the rocket and is taken away as glass. Um, but that is backed up completely because the rocket was full and didn't have anywhere to go to empty that out. So the, the way this was originally set up was we have lots of basically all of the um, the exotic metal processing. So the iridium, the holmium, the beryllium, um, I don't think the uh, Vitamelange requires this, and I don't think the um, Cryonite produces. Oh no, Cryonite! Yeah, Cryonite does. I don't, but I don't think the Vulcan. No, no, and Vulcanite does. It's only, it's only, it's only Vitamelange that doesn't. So all of the, all of them, exotic metal processing. The, um, you bring it in here, you crush it, you crush the iridite down, it, you get the um, powdered irid uh, iridite, and you also get chunks of stone in it as well. And on this particular one as well, when you when you wash that, you also get quite a lot of sand out as well. And both of those, you need to get rid of them somehow, and you can't just you can't just make a mountain out of them, unfortunately. So you need to do you need to do something useful with them, or at least something something processy with them. And so I've decided that making it into glass is a good idea because I get through quite a lot of glass, particularly for making the memory card substrates. So that's all being done up here, being put into rockets, great. The rockets are then set to fly off to places that need glass, specifically um, Norvis orbit. Now, because, of, because I'm making all of the memory card substrates on Norvis in order to be able to use productivity module, pod modules with them, then I'm not actually using that much glass up in Norvis orbit. So there was a problem there that there was too much of, too, there was too much of it there. And it was I wasn't getting through it fast enough for, for, for what I'm doing all, all of what I'm doing here. So in order to get around that, I put another landing pad in here on Norvis. This one that's requesting glass. So it's, it's called glass drop. So whenever there is glass available anywhere in the solar system, a spaceship will fly in, land here. Not spaceship, a rocket will fly in, land here, and dump it all into here onto the train networks. And there's we've got 6,300. It's not not a great deal though. We've got to the point where we've we've got through the big buffer of glass that we, we had built up and so the point the thing is I can make glass on Norvis I can I can dig up rocks on Norvis from all of my stone mines like are there any <laughs> are there actually any stone well there's a stone patch there um, but I 
I believe I have some stone mines somewhere out on Norvis, but I, oh, there's one. Yeah, there's six million stone that's being dug up. Great. So it, do, it does it does exist, and that can be delivered to here, where it gets dropped off here. Um, no, that's that's sorry, that's bricks. It gets dropped off here. We cook it along here. We sorry, crush it into sand. Then we cook it with vulcanite, and that makes quite a lot of glass quite efficiently, and that gets loaded into the station here. Um, so this means that we have we have a ready supply available on, um, on on Norvis, but we need to make sure that we use up what's coming in from the spaceships, from, you know, from the rockets first. And the way you do that is by prioritization. So if we have a look in here, you can see this is now set to 10,000 priority for this uh, particular for this particular station. So that's quite a, that's quite a big number. It tends to go there first. Down here, we've got it set to. Um, about 5,000? 4,000 4, priority. And that was an arbitrary number I set earlier in order to make sure it would come from there rather than not here. Somewhere in my base. Is it somewhere? <laughs> and I have absolutely no idea where it is, but somewhere in the base there is another glass smeltery um, that's not using the vulcanite recipe. It's using the basic just cook it in, just cook it with um, in a furnace recipe. And so I don't really want to use that one if I can avoid it um, because it's it's very it's, it's very inefficient. So so that's my last my absolute final choice if I've run out of it completely from everywhere else. The um, the next choice up the chain is this one because at least it's made a bit more efficiently because it's cooked with vulcanite. And then by pr absolute preference, oh there's a train going in there now to pick pick some up. I wonder where it's going. Um, blast drop for the base. So that's probably going to be all be made into the uh, memory card substrate. So that's being loaded in there. Great. It it it, it works. Um, but then the absolute top priority is to use this one up first because that's the one where that uses up all of the all the excess glass that comes in from the um, uh, from all of the outposts wh uh, where I need to get rid of it. So it's 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 good now. It, it is now good and this is working. The only problem with this system. Um, is that there is a risk? Um, oh yeah, is, is that the glass up and not up on that I'm using on um, in Norvis orbit? Unfortunately, now gets brought to here, uh, so it gets brought into Norvis. We then have a station here that fills up with glass, loads it onto a rocket, and this one goes to glass drop, Nor glass drop Norvis orbit, or words to that effect. And it means it's double handling. I've got the glass being brought. Um, from from the outposts to Norvis and then up to Norvis orbit, whereas before it was being flown straight to Norvis orbit. And unfortunately, I haven't come up with a good way to get around that. I mean, I think it's probably possible with um, cunning application of things like um, uh, signals, sending signals and turning rockets on and off and stuff like that. I think it probably can be done and that might be something that's worth doing. But at the moment, I think I'm probably going to leave it with just just it's, it's a bit of a waste of fuel, but I'm making fuel from oil here. There's lots of it available. It's not too much of a problem. I think I'm just going to be slightly inefficient with this for now until I come up with a better until I come up with a better way of sorting it out. So yeah, that's that is working. So if we now go back to Kothar, I can continue talking about the iridium. So now that that now that that blockade has been sorted out, we've got all the glass flowing through from there. That's working nicely. We're getting the, getting the iridium being produced as fast as we want it. It's there's plenty available for all the spaceships that come in. However, there was another problem down here on Kothar. As you remember, in a previous episode, I set up this system here, and this is the this is doing the um, this is doing the core mining, digging up the uh, core fragments. They're then getting crushed into iridite stone and um, core fragment actual core fragments as opposed to the iridium core fragments that were being made before the the iridite from that is being put into the station and the core fragments are being passed down here where they load up this train which goes into the spaceship and when the spaceship has two full trains it'll take off great that was that was all working except i hadn't that I, I can't remember exactly what I got wrong, but there was something wrong with the programming up here. It might have been just been the priority. I can't remember, but it did mean that the trains were not coming here and picking up the iridium, sorry, the iridite from here. They were picking it up from the other mines, like this one and the big one down here and one in the middle here and, and so on. So that wasn't working. Um, I have since been in and fixed that. So now, when we do finally have a spaceship come in and to, to pick up some some iridium from here. The iridium will then be processed through. It comes. The iridite comes from the station here, but now because I've got the priority set up correctly, the trains that drop it off here will always go to the uh, the core mining facility here, and um, and take it take it from here in order to fill that one up. 
and so this is this is this is working uh, we've got in fact I don't know why that's sat there maybe it's not working because there is there's is a bit of everything in all of these oh I know I know what it might be one of the one of these wagons uh, out of map mode please one of these wagons is presumably not quite full that one is full that one's full that one is not full of stone presumably because all of the inserters yes all of the inserters are holding core chunks that's really annoying so what if I what I think I need to do here is set this one to only do if you have to set this one to only do stone there we go that'll probably fix it and I set that one to only do core chunks core fragment there we go like that um, whitelist Ooh, and there, there we go, There's space, the spaceship just left. <laughs> I wasn't watching it quite closely enough. So what I need to do is then copy that setting across to all the rest of them. So, so that they all, all behave in the same way. They all do that. Um, and then that'll that'll fix this up and we won't have that problem again. So now when the spaceship comes back, it's going to be almost enough. It's going to be almost almost enough. In fact, we have filled up this tr one of these trains, apart from the problem I just mentioned. So yeah, I'm going to need to go in and, and fix that for the future. And I'll, But I'll do that off camera. So that, that, that'll sort that issue out nicely. Great, happy with that. Um, so I think that was yeah that was everything I wanted to say about making heat shield tiles. Yes, everything I've just said was all about he making heat shield tiles. Can you tell? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is over in Miokin. Now we have some issues here with produce we had some issues here hopefully they're fixed um or hopefully them they are mostly fixed they're not quite fixed because i just need to do the last little bit of this but i'll talk about it anyway so we're running out of water here for these um to power these um turbines because we don't as you may remember miokin is a completely arid planet there is no, no there are no lakes anywhere on this planet at all so we what we have is we're bringing in water by uh, by spaceship we're putting it into these tanks Boil, boiling it into steam in the heat exchangers and then we're using condenser turbines to turn that back into water instead of just blowing the steam off in, into, 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 the, into the atmosphere. Um, and that's pretty good. It's something like 97% efficient as far as I remember. Um, however, it's not um, it's not 100% efficient. So it, it produces slightly less power but it gives you most of the water back. So the water will go back into the pipes, flow back into the tanks and it can go around the loop again. Great. It basically works, but you do need to bring some water in in order to keep it running. And the problem I had was that the spaceship that was coming in and landing here, the one that came up from, from Norvis to Miokin, wasn't travelling often enough. So if we look down he here, yeah, we have this spaceship. It's just arrived by the looks of it. So it's loaded. It's, it's unloading all of the um, the vulcanite it brought with it. Brought with it. It's unloading all of the stone that it's brought with it as well. So those are getting passed around into the into the system and and, and dealt with appropriately. Great. Um, I've put in. I've, I've what I've done. I've stretched this spaceship a little bit, so it's a little bit longer than it used to be. And I've been able to put in an extra row of water tanks. So there's more. So there's more room for more water in here than there was before. We're filling those up. And I think I've probably set one of these. Um, one of these, one of these, probably. No, I haven't. I was going to say, I thought I'd set one of these to keep an eye on the amount of water that's in the ship, but apparently I haven't. So before, the spaceship was just sitting here on, on Norvis, unloading the Vulcanite. Great, that's exactly what I want. But it would just sit here until the Vulcanite had finished unloading completely. Um, and in that time, which is, normally would be great, because you don't, there's no point in having the ship flying back and forth if there's plenty of Vulcanite available. You just, you just want it to sit there until it's completely empty, then go back to get some more. But because it's taking the water in the other direction, when when that happened, it was it was um, it was going back out there with, um, only when it had run out of Vulcanite, and that could mean that it, that the uh, the Miokin base could run out of water in that time because it's generating power, it's being used for various things, so so the water is getting is getting used up. So what I needed to do is I needed to make sure make sure it would then go slightly more often. So I'm putting these extra combinators along the side here. This one is saying if you're on Norvis and you've got a signal of less than 25,000 W, and you've got a signal and there's more than 260,000 water in the spaceship, then go. So that's another reason to go. 
and that W signal is being is coming in on this receiver here, or at least will be coming in on this receiver here. At the moment, it's not because I need to put down this transmitter that's in this in this yellow chest here down on Miokin when the ship gets there, and I haven't done that yet. So at the moment, it's just it's probably going to go when we get down to when we have at least 260,000 water in here. So that's it's sort of a good thing because it means I'm taking the water over and getting making sure that all gets f take, taken over and we, we top it all up as quickly as possible. But what it, what it essentially means is that this spaceship will leave here either when it runs out of Vulcanite to unload on, on Norvis or when Miokin runs out of water. And so those two, and th either of those reasons is enough to get the thing to launch and to fly off, refuel and then fly out to, uh, to Miokin. So it's an extra it's an extra reason and it's an extra extra use of the ship and that i think is is going to work quite nicely as i say i just need to put down this transmitter here and i haven't done that yet um now looking at this these tanks are filling up very very quickly i'm, I'm happy with this because this is still at uh two thirds two thirds full and it's been unloading solidly um and these are now virtually full. I mean, even the even the ones that fill up slowest are 80% full. So that's going well. Happy with that. That's going to work. That's going to work nicely, I think. So that should then solve the problem on um, on Miokin of running of running out of water. We've got got and, and also have, well, there'll always be plenty of so there'll always be plenty of water here. There'll always be plenty of vulcanite on Norvis, and I think things should just work nicely. And the reason we're getting through so much water is because we're getting through a lot of power. And we're getting through a lot of power because these uh, core mining drills are running constantly. And they are basically 75% of the power that's being used on this planet. That's crazy. Um, at least at the moment because the um, these machines are, are idle because we're not transporting uh, cryonite right now. Uh, not cryonite, vulcanite right now. But it's filling up these trains nicely. I think we're having the same problem with these trains. Yes, we are having the same problems here with these trains. They're not, they're not leaving when they should. But I'll, I'll sort that out in a in a, in, 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 a minute, in in a few minutes off camera because you, you've seen you've seen how I fix that and it's it's a fairly straightforward process. Speaking of Miokin and having just noticed what's going on here, clearly I'm going to need to um, do a bit of fixing here because this has got hit by a meteorite strike and also that means i need I clearly need more anti anti meteorite turrets along here because this this 10 is not enough because a meteorite has snuck through and hit one of my spaceships which is really annoying i think the only oh yeah it's even worse than that because it's damaged one of the um the pieces of wall there so that means a space this spaceship can't actually leave because there's a hole in it and you can't fly a spaceship with a hole in it so i think i'm going to need to come over and fix this up manually and while i'm doing it I'll get this sorted out as well. On the subject of meteors, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm managing to segue reasonably well between things here. On Kalidas orbit, we've had a couple, of, we've had a problem or two with um, holes being punched in my massive solar array up here. So I've, I've fixed that by putting in a box here with like a thousand shells in it, and I'm just going to need to remember to come out every so often and fill it up because there isn't any process up here for making them. I don't have ships coming in here regularly enough to top it up. I mean, maybe I could, possibly I could with the one that comes here for the um, um, for the probes, but I don't think I don't know if it's going to come out often enough. So at the moment, I'm considering that to be manual, which is bad, but you know, it's something I can pretend I can I can deal with if I need to. So that's pretty much everything I've been working on. I've made a couple of little tweaks to um, to the science over over on uh, in in Norvis orbit, because there were a couple of things here that weren't quite running to my satisfaction. The first one was ab was absolutely trivial. It's the sort of thing you'd expect you probably expect me to do, and I hardly need to speak talk about. But I put in an extra magnetic monopole um, construction machine here because I felt that these weren't being produced fast enough. And it turns out they're oh, where did they come out? No, they go in. Why are they not being made? What have we run out of? Run out of EM field data. Okay. So this is one of those things where I need to trace this back and find out why none of these are being made. Um, it's that one. Yeah, I think it's this one. So these have run out of something. These have run out of polarization data. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, is that right? Yeah, polarization data. So now we look down here. Um, and I think it was this one. Yes, this one. And you're not being produced because you've run out of memory cards. <clears throat> That's interesting. Now, I did notice a lot of um, the data card substrates being packed up onto the, onto the spaceship to be brought up into orbit. So I imagine they're going to... Yes, it's, it's here. This is, this is the problem. We've run out of the data card substrates. So once the spaceship comes up with another load of miscellaneous stuff and lands in here, then we'll be, then we'll be able to sort that out. 
can't remember what I was building that ship for, but I'm sure it was important. Okay, so there's a another, and you can see my yak shaving train in there. There's the, um, the, the went back about through about four steps there, and it turns out it's something that is basically fixed, but probably fixed. But we need to wait for that to come up and get sorted out. Another thing I think I came in and did. It's interesting because I don't seem to have done it. I was going to say I thought I'd come in and put in more uh, machines to make these, but maybe I haven't. And but maybe it's just caught up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, Anyway, that's the sort of the sort of thing you need to think about. I may need to upgrade these to um, uh, to the space manufacturers. You use these big machines instead, just to make make the things a bit quicker. But at the moment, it it seems to be okay, so I'm I'm not going to fiddle with it. <laughs> so I think that's everything. That's, that's everything I've been up to. As I say, it's been a, it's been bitty. I've been in going going and fiddling with lots of different little things rather than going in and saying here is a new science pack or here is a spaceship, here is a new outpost. None of that. It's just been going in and following the um the flow of iridium through the through the the entire system in through the entire solar system in fact and just tracing all of the problems back and squishing each bug one at a time until i finally get back to a point until i finally get them all done and everything's flowing nicely uh, at least to the point where i then discover i've run out of memory cards again so i'll be fixing that for the next episode i think thank you for watching don't forget to uh, come along to the stream on uh, on Tuesday, Tuesday evenings. It's every Tuesday evening at 7.30 UK time. I shall be uh, streaming Factorio Space Exploration and showing you what I've been up to. If you you know if you subscribe, then you can you'll get a notification when I'm going to do that, and uh, you can come along and join join in and, and tell me when I've done something dumb or or maybe or give me good ideas. I mean, all, this all seems to happen on the stream. Of course, Thursday evenings are similar, but with Industrial Revolution, which I'm playing with some friends. So we've got some more Factorio there, and we're doing pretty well on that, I think. We've just got um, one more science pack to make, but at the moment we're sort of concentrating on uh, on better weapons to push back the Biter Scourge once and for all. And then on Wednesdays and Sundays at the moment, we've got the GTA videos coming out with uh, the Manhunt, with the, with the um, similar group of people, a few more of them, chasing me around the city, trying to shoot me, and... Um, and generally just while I try and complete various objectives. And we've got all kinds of fun clues and things coming in in that, so I think it's, it, that's, that's a lot of fun. You should definitely come along and check those out. But until then, until next time, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, and here's the spaceship. It's just arrived. <laughs> and there's all of the, um, the substrate cards coming out that I was talking about before. So that will flow around here through this, through this warehouse, along here, through the landing pad I was using as a buffer before. <laughs> There's a lot of buffers on this route. I uh, don't know whether that's really a good thing. I should probably get rid of one of them, really. And then flowing steadily into all of the assembly machines that are going to turn them into the polished substrates. That then come down and are turned into the actual memory cards. Which we can feed up along here and eventually into the station up top there. And at some point in the dim and distant future, there'll be enough of them in there that a train will come along and pick them all up and take them off to be made into whichever... Oh, yeah, it was it was en one of the energy science steps was um, was out of memory cards. So that should then get that that should then get that up and working again. All right, I actually am going to go this time. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. <laughs>